Today we're talking about how the INFJ practices the just let them philosophy. So this entire concept is something that's been really huge on TikTok lately, and it's all about allowing people to make their own choices. And as INFJs, we probably believe that this is our, you know, go-to thing in life. We just let people be who they are and they should go through life finding what is best for them. And that is true on a surface, but our biggest challenge is when it comes to us seeing that somebody is suffering and we cannot help them. We want to help them, but they don't accept our help. And it's really, really hard for us to actually go through with it and say, just let them. And the worst part about it is that we're willing so often to neglect what is best for us in order to help them because we just cannot let go. So today we're going to talk about how to get to a place where you can actually help people. You don't really have to let go, but you're also not pushing them into doing something that they don't want. And there are a lot of twists and turns to this. So don't think this is straightforward because it's something that took me a long time to realize in my own life, all the mistakes I was making and all the ways in which I thought I was helping people, but I was actually enabling them. But before we get started, I want to remind you if you haven't done this so far to download the free poster on the INFJ app epic life formula. And if you want to take it to the next level, get the INFJ epic life audio guide. So this is a do it yourself course that you can listen to wherever you're at, and it will help you to find the path towards your INFJ epic life. So understanding what you want, practicing it because as INFJs, this is the number one thing we have to get into action, creating our INFJ epic life in the real world. And it's a very comprehensive guide that is based on all the experience that I have working with thousands of INFJs throughout the last 10 years. So I really recommend you tapping into this if you're ready to change your life once and for all. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. As INFJs, it seems like we have two modes of operating. The first one is you have absolutely nothing to do with my life. So, you know, do as you please, think as you want. You have nothing to do with me. And this is approach us INFJs take very often. And for other types, this might even sound like we're pushing people out or we're not being very giving or we're being isolated or mean. But the thing is this, we have a finite amount of energy and the impact we're going to have on people is going to be very intense and it's going to be very meaningful, but only if we really make sure that we allow the right people into our lives. So we're naturally are either going to keep our circle small or we're going to make sure that we have enough space to really be ourselves and experience everything we want to experience because the closer somebody gets to us, the more it has an effect on our mood and the more we absorb other people's emotions, the less we actually feel like we're being ourselves. So this category of people, of course, we let them do whatever they want. We can be friendly, we can be kind, but most of the time we're actually using our FE, meaning our extroverted feeling function to not rock the boat. As in, I want to go to the grocery store, I want to get what I want, and I don't want any drama. I'm not going to tell the cashier who's being rude to me that they're being rude. I just want to keep the peace. I want to get everything done that I want, and then I just want to go and be on my way. So those are the kind of people that, of course, we let them do whatever they want. But, and here is the most important aspect, as soon as you have somebody that you want in your life, somebody who has an effect on you and somebody that you want to help because they're in your environment, it becomes really hard to practice the just let them philosophy. And it's not the best approach for others neither. So you have to think of it like this. Our second function is extroverted feeling. So this is all about doing something good for others, right? Having this as your second function, this is our parenting function. We want to make other people feel good. And so this is where we get into trouble because we see people's insecurities very often. And then we as INFJs have two choices. We're either going to make the other person feel good despite their insecurities, or we could speak our truth, which is actually going to trigger them. And so we're constantly in this dilemma if we haven't made a choice because those are the two options. And it seems like every single time we're being more of who we are, as in I'm expressing my truth, people are back off from us. But every single time I'm trying to be kind and I'm trying to be nice and I'm trying to be, you know, the person who makes the other person feel good in the moment, it always leads to resentment because I feel like I'm giving so much into that relationship. And the other person, on the other hand, like even feels like we're taking advantage of them because we're not really being ourselves. And there's always this manipulation going on. 
And for the longest time, I was not aware of it. And I believe most INFJs are not aware of it because what do we consciously think? We think, okay, I see my friend here and they have insecurities, they're very moody, um, they don't believe they're worth it, whatever it may be. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be the blanket that's going to make them feel good no matter how they act. But this behavior of ours is always leading to the other person leaning into their unhealthy behaviors. And this is something I took the longest time to understand and I believe most INFJs really struggle with this because this isn't evident for us. Like even for people like us who have such an insight into what other people are feeling, what their insecurities are and so on, it's so much harder to, you know, use that knowledge on ourselves, to parent ourselves, to understand, okay, what am I actually doing here? Because what we're doing is not in the best interest of the other person. It's not. So if our parent function is, I want to do what's best for them, not telling them the harsh truth is not the just let them theory. If we are enabling their behavior, we're not saying just let them. We're actually manipulating them. Because the only reason why they continue on this path and they do more of their unhealthy behavior is because we're there. Because we are being a crutch to them. And the mistake that we're thinking is, if I'm just going to be there to stabilize them, then they're going to find our path. They're going to get into balance. But that's just not the case. And it takes a lot of practice, I believe, to really recognize this. But hopefully through videos like this, and you know, I'm not the only one who talks about this, you understand that this is not going to help because the person is suffering, not because there's something intrinsically wrong about them, but they're acting this way and hurting themselves and self-sabotaging themselves because they're making wrong choices, because they're thinking wrong things, because they're focusing on the wrong things. and we can see that. I'm not saying that we as INFJs don't make mistakes. Of course we make mistakes, but we have the tendency to see things like that. So if we act in a way of, I'm going to be a support system in a way of, I'm just going to put like this blanket on top of you and tell you whatever you do with all your insecurities, with all of your self-sabotaging behaviors, you're amazing and you're beautiful and you're, you know, worth it and whatever it is we're not really doing what is in that person's best interest. We're not really loving them. Because what we're doing is saying, the only way you're going to be fine is if you're around me. Because I'm the one who compensates for your behavior. And again, it never leads to anything and it's no wonder people get resentful. So what do we do about this? What is the conclusion in this? Well, first and foremost, we have to understand that there's always a selfish motive in this behavior as well. And I'm not talking about the other person. I'm talking about you as an INFJ. Yes, you want to help them. That's for sure. But there's also this thing of if I'm their savior, they cannot leave me. They are forced to stay with me because where else? could they have this acceptance of who they are? That the way they go through life is perfectly fine. They're not going to find it anywhere else. Finding an INFJ who can do this for them is, you know, very, very rare. You know how seldom INFJs are. So most people have never met one. The people who have are not really friends with them unless you're already in this community and are actively searching them. But you know what I'm talking about. So always think about the fact that you're doing this, yes, because you want to help the other person, but there's also an irresponsible aspect to this. And this irresponsible aspect of it is I don't want to be abandoned. I don't want to be the one who's going to be ostracized for who I truly am. And so in order to avoid this, I'm just going to play my part. I'm going to manipulate them into staying with me. And then, you know, it's a win-win, right? They feel good. I feel good because for what I'm doing for them. And so they will feel like they have no other choice but to stay with me. I know this sounds cynical and I know it sounds like I'm saying INFJs are evil masterminds who, you know, want to hurt the other person or who want to manipulate them or whatever it may be. I know that this is what it sounds like and this might be triggering to some of you. It definitely would have triggered me because of course there is no manipulative conscious thought you know, as in, oh, I'm going to do something that is harmful to others and I'm going to manipulate them to stay with me. No, it's more like, I know better than you. I see that you're suffering, so I'm going to help you 
and therefore, you know, I'm putting 70% into the relationship, I'm getting 30 back. And so therefore you'll stay with me. And most of the time we're doing this because we just don't know what better way to do this in. Like, you know, if we say, okay, that's the only option, what would be the other option at first glance? Well, the other option would be, I see that that person is suffering and I just let them continue to suffer. We as INFJs cannot do this. This is extremely hard for us. Why? Because FE is our parenting function. We want to make others feel good. We want them to feel good. So if we see somebody suffering in our close environment, it's incredibly hard for us to continue watching them to suffer. So of course, our first approach is, oh, I'm going to make them feel good about the way they currently are. And therefore, you know, they can stay in my environment because otherwise I would really need to push them all out because I can't look at them self-sabotaging, being in this misery. And most of the time, it's not that we INFJ see somebody who's suffering and we say, oh, I cannot handle this, so please stay out. Most of the time, it's more like, I can't let you into my space because once I do, I have the responsibility for you. And if I take on the responsibility, I have to be able to help you. And I can't do this with, you know, so many people, particularly if it means I have to actually alter myself in order to make you comfortable. So there's so many aspects to this in a way of, I have the best intentions. I want to help that person, but I'm forgetting that there is a selfish aspect to this. I'm forgetting the aspect that this is not in their best interest because I'm actually just giving them fish. I'm not teaching them how to fish, you know, that kind of approach. And thirdly, that we're not really allowing others to make the choice of if they want to be in our lives. Because the version that we're showing them is not who we really are. And this is where it gets interesting. What a much better approach for us INFJs would be in the sense would be to say, I want to help that person. But in order for me to be truly helpful, as in I want to be kind, not nice, I have to make a choice and that choice is the following. I have to speak and live out my truth. I can't wait for other people to change their behavior without me changing my behavior. So if I'm saying to people, in order for you to feel better, you have to make better choices. You have to understand what's going on and then act accordingly. You're not doing what is in your best interest. And with that, you're hurting yourself and you're hurting others. But you're not going to be able to manipulate or force people to make that change. It only happens through the just let them approach. But in order for this to be something that we're not just telling ourselves, but actually believe, the only way this can happen is if we live out our truth. If we say harsh truths and if we live out harsh truths, which are, for example, I have to make sure that I'm good. I'm going to do what makes me happy. I'm going to let you know if it comes down to it that you're not acting in your best interest, that you could grow more, that you could become a better version of yourself that would be better for you and for others. You don't have to live in this self-sabotaging behavior and I'm not going to make you change because I can't force you. I can't manipulate you to do this. You know, I can help you and make you feel good in the moment, but that's actually the worst thing we could do. What is the kind thing to do is actually make that person uncomfortable and not going out of our way to make that person uncomfortable. It's more so if I choose what is best for me, it will inevitably make them feel uncomfortable. If I live out my truth, if I say my truth, if I say your behavior, the way you act is not in alignment with how I want to feel. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to make you feel good about this because I don't feel good about it. You don't feel good about it. So why should I pretend? I'm actually going to take a higher approach of love of saying, I'm going to be the best version of myself that I possibly can, meaning I'm going to go towards my INFJ epic life. I'm not going to allow energy to come into my space that is destroying my peace. And I'm not going to neglect myself in order to make you comfortable. And that is the true, just let them philosophy. Because what you're doing is setting them free. You're saying, this is who I truly am. This is my real truth. Are you going to stay with me despite that? If not, 
All the best to you. I love you. And you decide how far psychologically away you have to be around me, if at all, if really close or whatever it may be. And I have friends in my life who I love dearly and our relationship has changed, you know, like 180 degrees. For example, one of my best friends and INFP, we met in college. So it's like, I don't know, like 18 years ago, I've known her half my life. And it was such a codependent relationship. She was doing self-sabotaging behavior and I was there focusing on her, um, doing everything in order to not rock the boat. And there was a lot of resentment because I wasn't really truthful. She felt like, you know, I'm not letting her breathe and I'm keeping her captive, so to say, because, oh, you're doing so much for me, but then you expect me to be loyal to you because of that. So it was a very dysfunctional relationship dynamic, but of course we love each other and, you know, we want to make it work. So there was a lot of conflict. And, you know, through that, I learned a lot about myself, of course, and she did vice versa. But now, like the last 10 years since I started really working on myself and prioritizing my own well being, there has been a, you know, a much bigger psychological distance between us. Our lives have drifted apart. When we see each other, it's great, but currently it's not going to be as psychologically close as it used to be because the reason why I was so close is because I was pretending to be something I was not, right? I was neglecting what my wishes were. I was neglecting what made me feel like I would, you know, shine the brightest. The only reason why we were so close psychologically was because I was altering myself. I was being a chameleon. I absorbed her energy and I tried to soothe that in that moment. And now it's like, no, this is who I am. I speak my truth. I don't like it when there's behavior that doesn't make me feel good or that is demanding and whatever it is. And so it's her choice to say, how close do I want to be, you know, to Wences? And that's okay. Like you can allow people to make that choice for them. And you're solving two problems at the same time. Number one, you're actually allowing people to make the choice for them for real by saying, listen, this is my truth. This is the kind of energy that makes me feel good and you can leave it or take it. With that, you're showing them that you don't think that their behavior is the best. Because if you felt this way, you would be really close to them. You're saying, this is my space. This is what I need. I need people to protect my peace and then they can be closer to me right? You're showing that through your behavior. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to say it to that person. You will see how they will react differently once you start living out your truth more and more. And this is really a matter of practice. This is not something you're going to be able to, you know, do right overnight, but through taking actions, through building your INFJ epic life, the more and more you live out what is best for you, you live out your truth, you become more complete and all of that. People have the choice of Either they're going to listen because they can, they have the capacity to listen. They can take something from it and, you know, use that in their life, get inspired by that and, you know, really do what is best for them and become a better version of themselves. Or if they can't handle it, they will distance themselves. And this is a leaning into part. It's not going to be one person is going to, you know, completely get my truth and, you know, is going to be all in and somebody else is going to be drifting apart really, really far. People can pick up as much as they're willing and able to pick up. And guess what? You might be wrong. You're not this perfect alchemist who says the truth and doesn't make any mistakes. And you know, all of those things that on the one hand, we think we have in us. On the other hand, we're afraid we're not. I'm definitely not like this, but that doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to speak my truth. I'm still going to listen. I'm going to take in other people's input. I'm going to be open. I'm going to learn. I'm going to try to be a better version of myself as well. But the most important aspect is I'm not going to pretend like this is okay. Cause my well being has to come first. And very often it really comes down to, I have to make a choice. And what I believe is that person is going to leave me if I choose myself. And in that moment, we always, always, always have to choose. I'm going to choose me. I'm going to say my truth. I'm not going to be silenced. I'm not going to 
go back into my cocoon. I'm going to go out and live out and be an example and really get excited about my life and living out my purpose as much as I possibly can from this, you know, current state that I'm in. And then people can try to convince me that's okay. If they want to, they can. But the fact that I'm living out my life unapologetically and as authentically as I can, if this in itself makes people back off completely, then just let them. Just let them figure out because it's their prerogative how they live their life. And you'll see the more you tap into this, the more you see that of course people will, you know, move away from you a little bit. But so many will come back. But it will be in a different dynamic because people who are not living in their own truth have a really hard time if somebody else is living out their own truth because you become a mirror. You're not a mirror if you're really soothing them in their negative behavior and their self-sabotage. What is really triggering is when you say, no, I'm going to live out what is good for me. And then they see and feel, oh, I don't feel good around this. It reminds me that I'm not the version that I could be. And it takes a certain strength to be able to stand in this truth. And you should give people the grace and the space and the, you know, opportunity to find that strength within them, even if it takes 20 years. That's okay. Like, just allow people to do this. And through that, you know, on the other hand, we talked about the first thing is like, you know, you're living out your truth. But the second thing is you get to love people way more unconditionally than you were ever before. Because if people are in your life and you're sacrificing who you are in order to soothe them, it will come a moment where you have to door slam or where you have to get vengeful or where you're going to say a harsh truth that is really going to hurt because you know their insecurities. And you don't want to feel this way. I don't want to feel this way. But if you speak your truth and you live out your truth, so you're not just saying to people, be a better version of yourself, but you are a better version of yourself. You really make it your life's mission. Then you're walking your talk. Like making that sacrifice of being liked for being authentically you is always worth it. And through that, when you know, oh, I'm doing my best and I'm acting in a responsible way, I'm not manipulating people, I'm really showing them who I am, And if that means people can't stand it because it's too much for them, then, you know, I will have to live with that. And that's a choice that is really hard, but it's the only right choice I have. And at the same time, again, you can love people. You can love people at a distance. So you get to live out your truth. You get to make an impact and you still get to love people. And it's on them to decide how close they can be to you psychologically. It's their path. It's their life purpose. It's their prerogative, what they're going to do with their lives. So I hope that helped and inspired you to make, you know, better choices for yourself. And you'll see how we'll have a positive ripple effect on everybody around you. Remember, if you want some more insight into how to take the steps into creating your INFJ Epic Life, then get the free poster on the INFJ Epic Life formula. And, uh, you know, get started with the audio guide. You can start today. It's like readily available. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in line with today's topic, then check out the video you see on the screen right now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.